And for the fourth time in as many global incidents, U.S. Navy forces were the last to arrive on the scene. This time, it seems U.S. tardiness cost lives. Pentagon sources tell us this humanitarian disaster in the Pacific wasn't critical enough to merit a fuel exemption. As we know, the U.S. military's 2018 directive on expeditionary energy consumption provides the Pentagon's new formula to prioritize engagements based on fuel requirements. The Navy used to place a priority on freedom of action to engage as needed, but that was before a barrel of oil cost as much as a dishwasher. What's most impressive in this story is that our naval forces were able to travel to the Pacific at all, considering current oil prices and America's oil usage score this week. We never seem to know if the U.S. will be able to afford enough oil to run our military. And we can only imagine how the broader American economy and the public would react to fuel shortages if we had to go to war and redirect fuel. Ten years ago, you may remember, the Defense Department defunded energy development efforts in order to trim the budget. It was little more than a speck in the budget, but every item was on the chopping block back then. This might be the definition of short-sighted. And this is just in. We're getting word of an update to the military threat in the Arctic. Apparently, hostile forces are gathering in what could turn into a blockade of the Bering Strait. Blocking the strait would eliminate a critical pathway to U.S. oil interests in the Arctic Ocean. We're hearing reports that the current weak oil situation in the U.S. may be driving the hostile operations. It's clear to our enemies that our ships and aircraft have limited capabilities to respond. The future we've just seen isn't set in stone, but key driving forces may be. Oil will be harder to come by in the next decade. A barrel will cost several times what it does today. It will come from unstable sources, and there will just be less of it to go around. But here's the deal. A lot of our naval infrastructure was built to run on energy-dense liquid fuel and nothing else. Those ships won't be replaced for decades. Alternative fuels are one solution, and the Navy is investing a lot of money and research to advance biofuels as an oil alternative. But it's looking like the supply won't go far enough to meet the demand. So all that leaves the Navy with a continuing need for oil in a decade where oil will be a rare thing. What do we do? The Navy needs to get smarter about how and when we use energy, and we need your ideas for getting there. We need to start by improving the efficiency of the Navy we already have today. But this isn't about swapping out light bulbs. What if we improve our simulation capability to plot the most fuel-efficient course for ships? Or what if every person in the Navy tracked their individual energy use and their own inefficiencies? But we also need to rethink the big picture. We need to reimagine every way we use energy. What if ships could resupply themselves by fabricating food and parts on board in shipboard 3D printers, eliminating the need for supply runs? Or what if we invested in drones and cyber warfare to extend the reach of the Navy past the traditional fleet capabilities at sea? We've already seen the worst that could happen. A hobbled Navy with a dependence on oil that becomes our biggest strategic weakness.